in this video, we'll talk about how to do the method of partial fractions when the denominator has only linear factors. And we're going to build on the examples from the last video. In the last video, we saw an example where we were integrating some function 2x minus 3 divided by some function that factored as x minus 2 times x minus 3. So here, let's just do a similar example. The integral of 1 over x squared minus 2 dx. The first thing to do, remember, is to check that your rational function is proper. In this case, it is proper because the degree of the polynomial 1 is 0. This is a convention. When you have a constant function, its degree as a polynomial in x is 0. And the denominator has degree 2. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. The next thing we do is we factor the denominator. And in this case, we want to factor x squared minus 4. And remember, there's a very nice way to factor the difference of two squares. We have x squared minus a squared factors as x minus a times x minus b. So in this case, we have x minus 2 times x plus 2. So the heart of the matter is the method of partial fractions. In the method of partial fractions is the partial fraction decomposition. The method of partial fractions guarantees that there are real numbers a and b so that 1 over x squared minus 4 can be written as a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. And at the end of the last video, we talked about how to find a and b. So, the method of partial fractions tells you that there are such a and b, and now we have to find them. Well, we want to put everything over a common denominator. So we'll multiply a over x minus 2 by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And we add b over x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. We'll rewrite the numerator as something times x plus something not involving x. The more examples like this you do, the faster you'll get at some of the algebra. So now we have two rational functions, and their denominators are the same. So their numerators also have to be the same. So what does that mean? So we get 0x plus 1 is equal to a plus b times x plus 2a minus 2b. This implies that 0 equals a plus b and 1 equals 2a minus 2b. So we get two equations and two variables. The first one says that b is equal to negative a. Right? Because if a plus b are 0, then b has to be the negative of a. So now the second one is 2a minus 2 negative a which is the same as 4a. So 4a equals 1, and we see that a equals 1 fourth, and b equals negative 1 fourth. So often the hardest part of the method of partial fractions of integrating a rational function is rewriting the function you're integrating as a over something plus b over something. And this really is just algebra. There's no math to be material that goes into this. So I'll pause, and then I'll rewrite the integral we're trying to do, and just finish up the details in a second. Our goal was to compute the integral of 1 over x squared minus 4 dx. And we have figured out that 1 over x squared minus 4 can be written as 1 fourth divided by x minus 2, 
minus one fourth divided by x plus two. So that means that the integral we want is equal to one fourth the integral of one over x minus two dx minus one fourth the integral of one over x plus two dx. And these are really similar to the integrals we did in the last video. So I'll just say that this is one fourth natural log absolute value of x minus two minus one fourth natural log absolute value of x plus two plus c. And remember, you can rewrite this using log rules if you like. This is one fourth natural log of x minus two minus natural log of x plus two. So you can write this as the absolute value of the quotient x minus two over x plus two plus c. Uh, but either way is fine. These two answers are equally correct. OK, so this is a pretty standard example of what a partial fractions question on a quiz or in an exam might look like. Remember, the big step is usually this one figuring out how to rewrite your rational function as a sum of easier rational functions. Let's now look at an example where your denominator has more linear factors. So far, in each case, the denominator q of x has factored as x minus something times x minus something else. But what if your denominator is a little more complicated? Like, what if we wanted the integral of x squared plus 2x minus 1 over 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x dx. Well, OK, this looks complicated. The first thing is just to check that this is proper. And it is. The degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 3. So the next thing we want to do is factor q of x, the denominator. And this is not so bad. There is one factor I see right away. There's an x in each of the terms. So we get x times 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And if this is going to factor, it's going to factor as 2x minus something, x minus something, where that minus might be negative. And if you play around with this a little bit, if you have like a minus something here, you get this times the 2, and you get, uh, yeah, so you get an x plus 2. This gives plus 4x, but we really only want a 3x and x minus 1, so that the 2 times the negative 1 gives the 2, and 2 times this plus this times 1 is 3. So again, what are we doing? We're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 2, where 2 times the first one plus the second one is 3. OK, so what we would do is we would hope now that partial fractions, when our denominator has these three linear factors, works just like it did when we had two linear factors, that we could write x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2, we would hope that we could write this as a over x plus b over 2x minus 1 plus c over x plus 2. And the method of partial fractions says that we can, that there are unique real numbers, a, b, and c, that make this rational function equal to this sum of three rational functions. So, oh, let me rewrite this a little better. So now instead of having these two unknowns, a and b, you get three unknowns, a, b, and c. When you put everything over a common denominator, you get some expression involving a, b, and c that now involves x squared x and a no x term, and you get three equations and three variables. So these really can pretty easily become complicated. 
become really pretty complicated. So I'm not going to go through the details of this example. What I want to do instead is tell you the other thing that can happen when your denominator gets more complicated. Like here we had three linear factors. If we had four linear factors that were all different, we would have another term that was like plus d divided by that next factor. So the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is what happens when you have maybe two linear factors that are the same. So instead of having like x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2, you could have something like x times x plus 2 squared. So what happens when one of the factors shows up more than once in the denominator? All right, so I'll pause and erase, and then we'll talk about repeated linear factors. In the examples we've seen so far, the denominator factors as a product of distinct linear factors. And each time, in the partial fraction decomposition, we got one term for each of these distinct linear factors. Like when our denominator was x squared minus 4, which is x minus 2 times x plus 2, we got 1 over x, minus, x squared minus 4 equals a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. There's one thing that we're adding for each of these factors. But what if one of your factors is repeated? Like what if you have something like this example? So we'll do the same first step and check that this rational function is proper. The numerator has degree 1, and the denominator has degree 2. And then we'll factor the denominator and see that x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals x minus 1 squared. So the method of partial fractions does not say, let me really emphasize this, does not say that there exist unique a, b with for x over x minus 1 squared equals a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1. The problem is the denominators here are the same. Remember, how did we find a and b in the cases we've done so far? We put the right-hand side over a common denominator. But here, they're already over a common denominator. So we just don't get the two equations and two variables that we want here that have a unique solution. So OK, here's what it does say. We just need to change things a little. So partial fractions, the method of partial fractions, says there exist unique a and b with same thing on the left-hand side, 4x over x minus 1 squared equals a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 squared. So we now get one term, not for each distinct linear factor, but one term for each power of our repeated linear factor. So I'm going to pause and erase, and then I'll show you in this example how to find a and b. How do we find them? We put everything over a common denominator, then we'll have two rational functions with the same denominator. And so their numerators have to be equal. And again, that will give us two equations that need to be solved by the two variables a and b. Our goal is to find the unique a and b that makes 4x over x minus 1 squared equal to a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 squared. We put everything over a common denominator. And what we get is a times x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 squared equals 4x over x minus 1 squared. So 4x plus 0, the numerator on the left-hand side, equals ax plus b minus a. We know the x parts have to be equal, and the no x parts have to be equal. So a equals 4, and 0 equals b minus a. 
but that just means b equals a. So b is also equal to 4. So where does that leave us? Well, the integral that we wanted at the beginning was this integral of 4x over x minus 1 squared. And we just saw that this is equal to the integral of 4 over x minus 1 plus 4 over x minus 1 squared dx. We can factor this as 4 is the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx plus 4 times the integral of 1 over x minus 1 squared dx. The first part we know well by now. This is uh, 4 times the natural log of absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. And then the next part is actually easier. How do you do an integral like 1 over x minus 1 squared? Well, how do you do the integral of 1 over x squared? Just with the power rule that the integral of 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x plus c. So this is the same thing if you apply a u substitution with u equals x minus 1, du equals dx. And what we get is 1 over u squared. But let me just go through this a little bit quickly. You get a minus 1 over x minus 1 plus c. Just to rewrite everything a little more nicely, what we get is 4 natural log absolute value x minus 1 minus 4 over x minus 1 plus c. OK, so that's how to do our first big example where you have one repeated linear factor in the denominator. So let me just show you what does the method of partial fractions tell you when you have maybe a denominator that has a bunch of repeated linear factors, maybe like x squared. Sorry, let me move this over. Yeah, so let's do an example where maybe we want to integrate a function that's like 1 over x squared times x minus 1 squared times x plus 1 squared. The method of partial fractions would say that now there are six numbers, a, b, c, d, e, f, so that you can write 1 over this denominator as a over x plus b over x squared. We have two terms that come from the x, the repeated factor of x in the denominator, plus c over x minus 1 plus d over x minus 1 squared. Two terms from the repeated x minus 1 squared factor, plus e over x plus 1 plus f over x plus 1 squared. So you should know what the method of partial fractions tells you here that you need. When you have a repeated linear factor, if you had an x cubed, you'd have an a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x cubed. You need one term for each of the repeated factors, and then you just go through the factors and include one for each. You should know what it tells you, but it would be very painful to find the values of a, b, c, d, e, f that make this work. Because if you put everything over a common denominator, what you would get here is six equations and six variables. And right now, you don't have the tools to solve for those equations. That's actually something that you learn in Math 3a, in linear algebra. You learn all this material about how to solve equations exactly like this one. So uh, in this class, what you'll get may be something with like one repeated linear factor and another factor, something like 
the denominator factoring is like x squared times x plus three, something like that. Or the other complicated thing that can happen is in the next video, I'll tell you what to do with irreducible quadratic factors that look like x squared plus nine, something like that.